Welcome. Welcome to another episode of You Don't Need That Shit and spoiler alert, this week I have not much saved. Actually, two of the saved items are more on a commentary vibe. Um, one is ridiculous, the other one is ridiculous, the third one we talked already about, the fourth one is weird, and the last one is weird. So this is going to be more of a short video, but you know, it's okay. Slow fucking down, like especially with one release here in that video, I am, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm recommending, no, not recommending, I am asking the brand, can you slow the fuck down? We don't need a palette every other month, but um, I, I start to ramble already. Uh, by the way, this um, kind of excessive look that I'm wearing today, that is very much out of my usual comfort zone. Let me check once more in the mirror. Um, this is a look I will be uploading on Friday for the controversial Friday. I don't know what it was, but I was like talking, 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 talk, stop it. And then um, for whatever reason, this happened, but I kind of like it. So before I just um, lose myself in admiring my look, which is not healthy at all, let's just stick into the releases. We have a new palette, the Nuva Vida from Gourmand Girl Cosmetics. And I'm 100% honest with you, this looks like they had a couple colors and pants left over from their very excessive launches last year. Like the two Halloween palettes that came like back to back, then the winter palette, and then there was something else, I think. But it's it's too much, it is, it's not okay. And this is just like a leftover palette. Do these colors look nice? Yes, but do you know what they also remind me of? Let me grab a very specific palette that I thought immediately when I saw this. I'm talking about the Odin's Eye Little Ghost palette with Angelica Ninquist. Um, I mean, you, Am I kidding? Am I wrong? Is this just all in my head? But I feel like there are a lot of similarities in color story and a lot of people pointed something like this out with the Gourmand Girl Silent Night palette and not gonna lie, the Silent Night looks a lot like the Christmas Eve from Odin's Eyes. So is this a thing? Is Gourmand Girl's kind of duping color vibes from Odin's Eye or are we just all so fed up now with um, with palettes and releases in 2024 that actually brands run out of ideas and it is impossible now to not dupe a thing? Let me know in the comments what you think or am I whoop, crazy? Um, talking about crazy, so Makeup by Mario last week started to sneak peek a new palette and I saw on Instagram on the Patty Alonso Storo, Storo? <laughs> story a weird comment like, oh, all I can tell you is I already saw it, like, yeah, we get it, pick me. Um, but she was like, it's not very interesting. And when I look at this picture, I'm honest with you, this looks super washed out. This looks like it's way too bright. It is not really good photographed. I'm, I'm, I'm honest with you. But I saw the looks that have been created with this palette already. I saw some other swatches. I haven't watched a review yet because I ordered it. Okay, you can shame me now. You have two seconds to shame me. One, two, thank you. Um, I don't know what it was. I, this palette was supposed to be released on March 14th at Sephora here in Germany, which is what day is it next wednesday or so no uh, thursday like yeah this this thursday and then on women's day i saw a post that sephora put this up like nearly a week early and then i didn't even think about this this was a true impulse buy this was the um the the art of the the type of purchase that i want to tackle with my no buy and i borderline regret it but now it's already sent and I'm honest with you. It all will depend on the feelings that I have when I open this palette. If there is a wave of joy coming at me 
from looking at the palette, I will keep it. If not, I will immediately send it back and I just regret that purchase and I'm, you know, I'm just honest with you. I'm also honest with you. The Monster Mats one, by the way, I haven't told you, it's the Monster Mats Neutrals. The first Monster Mats palette was a disaster. Not only were the colors very bad because they all turned into mustard on my eyes, but the quality was very bad. I'm talking like Essence or Catrice. I hope that this new Master Mats will have the same matte eyeshadow quality that we have in ethereal eyes because the mattes in there are not comparable to the old Master Mats. So hopefully. But as I said, I think on these pictures it looks super washed out and I guess this looks much, much different in person. So last week, I said it already, it's going to be Huda Beauty plumping glasses, and it is. And I love that some people had a good laugh at my saying that, please don't plump me. I still stay by that. And I just today, when I filmed this, it's Saturday today, it's March 9th. I saw a story from a creator showing her hand with like swollen stripes on saying, oh, I had an allergic reaction to a certain plumping gloss. Like, come on, do you play the dump or are you dump? It's a plumping gloss. And I'm pretty sure it's the Huda ones because that would fit because she said it's a new gloss. I guess it's Huda. That's the whole point of a plumping gloss. There is something in there that makes the skin, the surface beneath, swollen. Do you think that you get lip fillers from this? Fuck no. It's swollen, so it's completely normal that when you apply this on your hand for a swatch, that your skin swells. If it didn't, it wouldn't be a plumping gloss. And that is why probably a lot of the plumping glosses that we have do not work because there are not real plumping ingredients in it. And if I'm right, and this is the Huda gloss that she swatched, then this is going to be a real plumping gloss. The only thing that is actually a bit disgusting to me is how thick these look. They actually look a lot like those like vinyl liquid glosses that are very goopy and sticky. So. It's a wait for review for me because some of these shades, not gonna lie, I actually like them. On this picture, um, the first and the second are very beautiful. The last one looks like a nice nude. I don't know, maybe even the clear one, for whatever reason, I feel like a clear gloss. If that's a good one and not hurting plumping, could be a good staple, but I'm also, I just want to say it once more, um, please stop with the plumping glasses, we're good. Although I'm a bit surprised if, again, these swatches were from the plumping gloss and the reaction were from that, then ho, oh, oh, ho, oh, that's going to hurt, which is not good. But I was just instantly so annoyed by this creator. But now let's move on to something even more annoying, oh my god. Estee Lauder has come out with a new range of lipsticks. These are the Renewtrift the Diamond Serum lipsticks. Basically what these are, these are glossy bombs when I look at these pictures. Like they look very soft, they remind me a lot of... Um, what lipsticks do they remind me of actually? Oh the Charlotte Tilbury Kissing lipsticks, a bit like that. Like they're, they're lipsticks but they're not, not balmy like the Hourglass Phantom Bombs. They are definitely shiny or like the Dior Addict lipsticks, something in that range. But, and here you have it. First of all, is this packaging kind of, I don't know, have you seen this already? Because you should, we talked about this a couple weeks ago. Chanel had something very similar, but not with this like wavy design. It was all square and clear, completely glass lipsticks for 150 bucks. So Estee Lauder thought, ooh, let's do something similar, but only for 99. So yes, one single of these lipsticks is 99 euro. Thank you, but no thank you. This is ridiculous. Who pays 99 bucks for a lipstick? Like for real now? 
I mean, in this week's Controversy Friday, we will talk about why buy luxury and not drugstore, but this, like, like this is even for me a bit too much. Adept Cosmetics finally revealed, finally revealed, oh my god, I'm saying this now for the fourth time, just live with it. We finally see the inside of the new Adept Cosmetics Cyborg Choir palette, and wow. I'm not wowed at all. When I saw the first picture from Adept themselves on Instagram, I thought it was just a different angled shot of the Element 115 palette. I am happy that my assumption that this is going to be like a all mad version of the Seahorse palette was wrong. I'm very happy with that. But I'm honest with you too, I think this is a very disappointing release. I feel like the owners are currently running out of ideas and the fact that they have been putting out like three palettes in the past half year so that means every other month is a new palette coming from them slow down calm your tits calm one the other one's a party tit but calm the other we don't need the palette from you every other month we will still be here if you decide to not bring out a new palette in the next six months and be like you know what our next palette is going to be for fall Great, we will wait because we love you, but this, this is too much. I can't keep up. I think the color story is also not good. These mats just do not work with each other. So in the end, you will always have to pull in something else to blend these colors out. And uh, no, thank you. I just, no, thank you. I'm, I'm, I'm truly not interested. I want to circle back on the new House Labs blushes because they now are available since a couple of days. And in their initial We're Coming Back post, they said that they will be available now in a all new full size. I kind of, I read that and I didn't think about this because I, I was like, Okay, don't question it. It maybe is a weird marketing sentence. Turns out that they now cost $32 for you Americans, but you only get 5 grams. You'd be like now, hmm, that's a good price. Um, no, it's not. Because the old versions were 11 grams for $38. I remember that I paid 40 euro and 95 cents per blush with 11 grams of product. Now, let me check. I wasn't actually on the House Labs website to see what these blushes are now in euro. So let me just look that up. Color fuse blushes. Yeah, I don't want to be on the newsletter. 32 euro um, and no cents. Okay, 32 euro, but for less than half the product and eight euros less. Sorry, <sighs> no. This is something I don't understand your price policy. And also still, why are you not bringing back Acai Sky or Lavender Blonde? Someone pointed out in the comments of last video that Lavender Blonde was a limited edition. And yes, that's correct. I know that this was marketed as limited. But it's so random. Why this shade? It is so good. It is such a beautiful shade for those who want to have a cool toned purple but don't want to look dead because that can easily happen with purples. I'm honest with you, I am not a fan of this re-release because I feel like it is now making them even more money. And last but not least, also not a new release, but a sad goodbye. Blend Bunny Cosmetics is discontinuing the Sugar and Grunge palette for a... Hmm, is this now harsh when I say it? I say it, it's a dumb reason. I'm sorry, but I, I, I cannot agree. First of all, the Sugar and Grunge palette is beautiful. And the name Grunge has been around our lives uh, mid 90s, beginning of 90s, Nirvana, all that, grunge rock, you know, that, that time. Since that time, grunge is with us. There is grunge makeup, grunge music, grunge clothing, grunge um, stores, um, grunge lifestyles, everything. The word grunge has no trademark. But there is a little fucking brand 
I'm not going to say the name. I figured out who it is. I will not say the name because um, the owner specifically claimed in her stories that she does not want people to um, publicly say the name so um, that they are not thinking of like, yeah, let's go to the profile and make shish. But let me just tell you that this brand has like six followers on Instagram and not even one I should have held. They basically, okay, let, let me just read this. It has been brought to our attention that via a season and desist letter, a tiny local brand believes they own rights to the word grunge. I won't name names because they don't deserve a single new eye on them or the clout they're seeking. While there's no way this could be true and they have a very tiring fight ahead of them if they try to do this with the likes of billion and multi-billion dollars brands using the word, it's much more my style to flick the nonsense off my shoulder and move ahead gracefully. Sugar and Grunge was a really fun collection, but to avoid engaging in a fight that is truly beneath the brand, we will be selling off Sugar and Grunge palette at 50% off and moving on to bigger and better things we have come in this year. I don't need to keep up this one in my arsenal when I have so many beautiful products and collaborations to look forward to. Let me just rephrase that. There is a little tiny shit brand who thinks that because Blank Bunny uses the word grunge in their stuff, while Huda Beauty has pretty grunge, but um, they were not threatened at all, they wrote a letter to that girl in an indie brand from another indie brand <laughs> saying basically we own the rights to the word grunge and if you don't take back the palette you are sued that's it in the instagram story um blend bunny also said that they are well aware that these c's and the cis letters um i don't exactly know what this is and i'm too lazy to google that's just a motto in my life um that these are not a legal threatening yet, but they can turn into one. And they said that their attorney basically said that their client has a lot of money, deep pockets and a lot of time, so they will sue Blend Bunny. Honest with you, this would have been an easy case for Blend Bunny to win because there is no trademark on the word grunge, there is no copyright, no rights written anywhere, no patent pending, nothing why why is a brand pulling back because of a little whiny fucking bitch who tries to gain clout on one side i i like the way blend bunny reacts to this being like you know what i don't need that so move on on the other hand i i actually want to point out that i think this reaction this reaction could cause some people thinking that there is more behind the curtains than we are seeing currently, or that the brand owner just doesn't care about the products, which would be very sad because a lot of people just love Blend Bunny because they love the way the owner is just interacting with products, with makeup, and it's just spreading makeup joy. So not gonna lie, this is the most confusing thing that has happened so far in this first three months and this was not on my bingo card. And that is basically it because a lot of the other stuff that I have saved were either more um, like spoilers and shit that were then um, released or stuff. And I know that there is a new launch from Nomad Cosmetics that will launch on the day this video will be up. But the moment where I filmed this, the full color story reveal hasn't happened. All that I know at this point is that it's an Ireland themed palette, which I think is very fitting since, first of all, they seem to have like a history with Ireland and um, they are from there. I don't know. But they also now have a warehouse in Ireland. So if you want to buy from Nomad Cosmetics something, they do ship from Ireland, which is really cool. So you just, first of all, the stuff is here in a week. And second of all, you just save the duties and taxes. It's amazing. Um, so far from what I've seen, it's a green color story. We will talk about the whole palette, of course, next week. So, thank you as always. How do you feel about these um, launches? Is there something really tempting? Maybe the 99 buck lipstick? Let me know. Don't forget to subscribe and all that stuff. And I haven't said this again in a long time. Check out the info box down below because there are also newly added affiliate codes and shit from other brands. and. Yeah, I, I really hope that I can see you in the next one.